Here we go. So we're back on the grind and we're going to be talking about Triple Threat Online today. Um, I used to be really bad at Triple Threat Online. Like, I, I might run the board once or twice in every five attempts. Um, and, you know, even if I was doing that, I'd lose some games along the way. Now I run the board pretty much every time. Maybe eight, nine out of ten. Some of those times I'll lose games, but maybe half the time I'm, I'm doing it without taking a loss. And I just wanted to share with you the things that I'm doing that might help you sort of have more success on the game mode. Um, I want to start with the lineup. As you can see here, I'm running Cam, Zion and Larry Johnson. Uh, we're actually six, six wins in, I think, on the board. Um, I want to uh, sort of do a bit of myth busting first because I talk a lot about bad advice. There's a lot of bad advice. And one of the worst bits of advice I've ever got was the overall glitch on Triple Threat Online. Guys, it doesn't work. This is more than one person that's told me this. It doesn't work. The, um, the algorithm's not the same as Unlimited or Limited or whatever. So there's three things I want to cover. The first one is probably the biggest change I made. You can see that I missed a shot, but you've got to start shooting the ball. Like, I, I, I had this really bad habit before. Like I said, I wasn't doing particularly well. Where I just wanted to get to the rim, and if a shot was open, I would take it. Now I, I focus way more on um, just, just t uh, taking shots. Like getting open, forcing the situation. Now, if it's open like that, I'll take it. Um, it's, it's basically gone back to front, whereas before I used to force the rim, and if, if the, the three, uh, three was open, I would take that. Now it's the other way around. Now I'm looking for threes, and if, you know, if there's a shot open at the rim, I'll take that instead. Um, the second thing is IQ. That's the other thing I want to talk about. So in this game here, there's a time to off-ball, and there's a time not to. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is just is picking one of those things and just sticking to it because you don't you don't always need to do one or the other. In this game, you can see he's got Patrick Ewing. Patrick Ewing is not a perimeter threat. So Cam Reddish, I don't know why for some reason on this lineup Cam Reddish is my big, but Cam Reddish I am going to off ball with for this game. Now there'll be games later where I don't do that, but right now there's there's no reason to do anything different as long as we can stop him like that. It might get bailed, he gets bailed right. As long as we can stop him. We're probably going to win this game because he's going to be looking for twos and we're going to be shooting threes. It's that simple. So IQ plays a big part in, in Triple Threat Online. Um, you've got to look at the, the opponent that you're playing and you've, you've got to play accordingly. Now, obviously, this team isn't great. Um, looks like, I don't know, he's doing XP or something. It, it doesn't really matter. But if, you know, if it was, say, a good lineup, say that there were three pink diamonds, but you were still at a point where the centre couldn't shoot, then you can focus on, on the centre off-balling. Now, back to the shooting element of things. Like I said, he's going to knock down twos. We're going to replace those twos with threes throughout the whole game. You can see Zion's got takeover here. He just doesn't miss. Now, the key to shooting, some people really struggle with it. And I was definitely that guy for a long, long time. The key to shooting is to keep doing it. Just keep shooting. Um, I can see there, by the way, that he, he was looking for that, that Rex 3 because he couldn't get three with Ewing. Um, so he, he hit me with it once. So we kind of just switched our defense to him. So, we, we, you know, we stopped that off ball. But yeah, back to shooting. Like you can see there, I'm not greening everything. But as long as you're relatively comfortable with the jumpers and you can see the lineup here. That's, that's the next thing I'm going to talk about is you've got to have the right team. Um, this lineup is three players who can defend the post a little bit can shoot really well because I know their shot and, and really a shot's only as good as that. Um, you know, they, they can run the rim if I need to. There's, there's good length on the team as well. We've got 6'6 six, six Zion, 6'7 six, uh, Larry Johnson and 6'8 Cam Reddish. So, you know, they will get in passing lanes and they will cause problems on ball as well. Um, so picking the right team is really important. The one thing that this lineup does sacrifice is, um, is just rebounds. You know, obviously Ewing's going to out-rebound them. But you can see they're a comfortable win. We'll get on to the next game and I'll, I'll show you, uh, it'll be the seventh game. I don't know if this is the seventh game, it'll be the eighth game on this run. And you'll see, you know, as we go through, there'll be different approaches I use to different teams. So just, just to recap, like shoot, shooting is just vital. Like, you know, any, any game that you play that's tough. And, and there's so many people that would just off ball you the whole time. Eight out of ten games I play, that, that centre's sitting in the paint. You know, we know this. Um, so if you're, you know, you're countering that paint sitting center with cam reddish on the perimeter and you're relatively comfortable with this shot uh there you see i'm relatively comfortable again i didn't greet it but it went in he's hitting twos we're hitting threes again but it just counters that uh that paints it so well um 
He's got Jaron Fox, he's got Carl Malone, and he's also got Cam Reddish on his team. So you can see very quickly he's forcing his way through with Malone. So we're going to do exactly what we've done before. Passing the screen away is a great way to set up this three. You can see how open he is here. We're just going to pull that. Cam Reddish is our center, remember that. He is our big, so it's not a natural thing to go and mark him on the perimeter. So a lot of people aren't, aren't used to that. So you see here, he'll take a two. Honestly, sometimes when a game's going like this, I'll just let them take the two just to speed up the game. As long as I'm continuously hitting threes. The only point where I would change from hitting threes is if, one, I go on a little bit of a bad run and I just need to get some points on the board. Or, you know, two, if I am, let's say, five points up. Let's say it's 14 to nine, something like that. Um, I'll, I'll just make sure I don't throw away the win, you know, taking bad shots. So you can see here, he's switched away from the Carl Malone strategy because it wasn't working. He knows he needs to shoot threes. So he's trying to shoot threes. It's not natural. Uh, he does get a steal here, but again, <clears throat> we're in the passing lane there. We should have got that. He's shooting threes. It's really unnatural for him. He's actually shooting threes with Carl Malone now. Um, so again, we're just going to be patient. Use the entire shot clock. Some of the best advice I ever got. We're open. And we're going to knock that down again. Now, you can see again how quickly we're pulling away. Yeah, he's missed a couple of shots, nothing major. But just because we're getting threes for twos a lot of the time, yeah, we've missed shots as well. So it's fairly even. And now you can see, you know, it was at that point, 12 and 8. It's kind of what I said before, right? It was at that point. So I'll push through to the rim. Just make sure that we're not throwing this lead away. If he leaves me open for a three, I'll knock that down again. So perimeter shooting is just so, so important. And, you know, again, talking about the lineup that we have, they're just so versatile. You can see it here. I had a wide open dunk there, but I chose to let it go. Cam Reddish comes through because there wasn't a three on. And, you know, all three of those players can do that. All three of those players can get to the rim. All three of these players can shoot really well. Um, to get the, the shot down, it really is one thing. And again, it's something I changed this year. Last year, I just didn't use freestyle enough. I jumped in it now and then, like really, really right at the end of the game when I was trying out goat cards and things like that. That's when I was actually using freestyle. You've got to use freestyle to get used to the shots. Um, you can do it however you want to do it, like in terms of difficulty. I always start on Hall of Fame to get used to the release. And then I'll go to whatever the game mode is I'm about to play. So most online game modes are on All-Star. So I'll go on All-Star and practice a shot. And you can see, you know, throughout this video, I haven't greened a huge amount of shots. Um, but they are going in and it's because it's on All-Star difficulty. And if you know the shot roughly, if you're close, you know, you will do it more times than not. So... Let's run through and see a, a highlight of the next game. Um, just the ball drops. If anyone knows how to get these balls to drop where I want them to, that would be great. I've missed Antoine Walker seven times. Seven times. Okay, here we go. So we've got Kiki, Rafa, and Cam Reddish. So this again, IQ is super, super important. We know this guy is doing XP, right? He's got Rafa and Cam who are two really good players. But what is he going to be trying to do? He's going to be trying to score with Kiki van der Wey because he wants to get the XP done. So you'll see here, I'm on Kiki from the start. I'm all over him. Just so you know, this is also how you stop Cam Reddish. So he's gone to Rafer there, but that's not what he wants to do. He will go back to Kiki because he doesn't want to waste this game. So we're going to continue to do what we always do. And that's knock down threes. You can see Cam again, he's just backed off him. I guess he's trying to get rebounds with Kiki as well. I think that's one of the XP, but you know, we're just going to hit that shot all day. Um, let's see again here. He's going to look for Kiki. We know that's coming, so we jump the lane. This is what I mean by IQ. Like, you just need to know what your opponent's doing. If you look at the first game, you know, he was struggling at the post. He switched to Rex Chapman and hit the three, so we shut the three down. And then he really didn't have anywhere to go from that. Last game was a similar story. Um, and this game, you know, it's all about Kiki. So you can see, if he takes two on the inside, we don't care. Because we're going to be hitting threes. As long as we stop Kiki van der Wey from scoring, he's going to have to go to a plan B, which is not what he came into this game for. Uh, it's an easy uh, easy lane to the hoop there, so we'll, we'll take that as well. So again, the lineup's important. Uh, nice nice bit of lag there. Um, the strategy is super important. Like Again, this isn't a lineup where you know we've got a centre where we can just sort of paint it if we, if we wanted to or off ball. But we know what he's trying to do. He gets through with Kiki here. Again, it's for a two. It's not for a three. It's not ideal. It's not what he's looking to do. And we're still in control. You know, we're still very much in control of this game. We're up. And, you know, we've got the ball in our hands. So, again, we're just going to look for another three. Players moving around a little bit sketchy. And when they, when they kind of, you know, crowd like that in the paint, just hit pass and screen away, you'll get through. Uh, it's a clean lane through. So, we're just going to make sure we stay ahead. Um, he's having a tough time with things. He's having to take twos. 
all he wants to do right now is shoot threes with Kiki van der Wey, but we're not letting him do that. So we stuck at the twos. Again, we clamp him up. That's a good block. He gets blessed. Now he probably will hit a three now. No, he didn't. So it was forced again. You could see he kind of rushed out. He saw an opportunity and he pulled the trigger. He actually had more time than he thought. Um, but he's getting crowded. He's getting harried. He's getting all of that stuff. And, and you know, he's taking bad shots as a result. So you can see again, he, he looked up for Kiki. We were there again. He tried to bail out and there it went again. So just be really aware of what your opponent's trying to do. Um, in, this, in this instance, it's Kiki. And, and I just want to say, like I said, Steph Curry is one of the hardest cards to stop in TTO. If you run into like a Steph Curry, a Blake, and I don't know, a Giannis, it, it can be really, really difficult to stop them. And I'm not telling you this stuff's going to work every time. It's, it's just going to make you better at it. But the way that I'm stopping Kiki here is the way that you want to stop uh, Steph Curry. I don't know how to stop Blake. If anyone else knows, please tell me. But I don't know how to stop Blake. Uh, but you can see here, you know, we're, we're in a comfortable position. This guy's won, what, you know, 50-odd TTO games in the last few days. He's got Kiki. I don't know how far he is into his XP. But he obviously knows what he's doing. But we're just stopping him hitting threes. And we are hitting our own threes. And, you know, he's now really uncomfortable. The reason we're getting through the middle, by the way, is he was obviously paint-sitting with Kiki. He knows he can't do that anymore. So we've just switched. So if he, if he goes to mark on the perimeter, we'll come through the middle and vice versa. A uh, good ball drop here. We've got a diamond consumable and I, I think it had a, a, a three-point shoe in it. We've had a couple of those over the last, last couple of days. Um, again, if anyone knows how to, you know, like there you saw it dropped in the diamond consumable spot. But for me, like if Antoine Walker's there, I'm guaranteed not to get it. Seven attempts, seven times he's appeared and every one of those has been a five ball drop. You know, 35 balls I've dropped. And uh, yeah, no luck. But it's what it is. All right. Let's get into the next one. So, okay, not a great team again. We know he's going to be trying to do the Barros uh, XP, which I think is steals. Um, again, we're going to be aware of that. Again, we're not going to paint it because he's got uh, he's got Markinen. Actually, you know, maybe we will. He's got Markinen. So. Straight off the bat, we hit a, a three with Larry. And again, you can see how few of these I'm greening. I'm, I'm not great at shooting. He greens a shot there. That's good. I'm not great at shooting. Um, but it just works. It's just it's just the exploit of the game. You know, if the game gives it to us, we'll take it. Um, you can see Zion through the middle here. As he's left the paint open, so we can, we can take advantage of that. So, again, it's just all IQ stuff. Like, pick the right move at the right time. You can see there, we could have gone with Cam. We didn't. Back to Larry Johnson. He's open for the three. So we knock that down again. You can see here again, he's now taking bad shots because he's behind. Uh, he's pretty much given up on his XP at this point. We pull up with Zion and there's another three. So, you know, this is just the same pattern again and again and again that we're using. The right players, you know, the right IQ is super, super important. And just focus on shooting the ball. You can see we pop up there. That's another, that's another uh, made shot. Before, I used to just force my way to the rim and it was it just didn't work. Like, you know, I found myself playing so many people that were just hitting threes. The reason they're able to hit so many threes is because that's all they do, right? They literally just spend their time on TTO shooting threes. And, <laughs> you know, if you do that for, for a month straight, you're going to be pretty good at it. And if you're anyone who's shooting threes versus anyone who's shooting twos, the person who's shooting threes is, is very, very likely to win. So... You know, don't put yourself in that situation where, you know, you are running to the rim or, you know, you're trying to force things to the inside. Because although this sounds like common sense, the majority of people I play will either paint sit and, and hedge off Cam Reddish, which is a terrible idea. Or they will try and run to the rim, which is, you know, equally a terrible idea um, when you're playing someone who can shoot threes. So I think these three things will definitely help you, you know, win more games. They're pretty much the three things I did. None of it is settings. I mean, sometimes you can put no threes on, you know, if you want to get a little bit tighter on the on the defense, but it doesn't really do a lot. You know, you, you need to be able to get over and, uh, and contest a shot if, if you know that person's three hunting with that person. So there you go. We cleared the board. Got a couple of packs. We've got a flash pack and the diamond consumable. We got a curry three-point shoe. So that, that's, that's pretty good. So the only other thing really is, you know, for, for this XP agenda stuff, you want to get through this stuff pretty quickly and... and you know, I don't win every game. Don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting there going, I win absolutely every single game. But, you know, we were at five on the board when these dropped. We won another five games and then we ran the board. So we've got 15 wins in a row. You know, I'm not, I'm not amazing at this, but the strategy definitely helps. Uh, helps you to get more wins and, and more importantly, get them quickly when you know, we're up against it. As you can see, I'm behind on the XP quite a lot at the moment because we've been playing Unlimited. 
Uh, the only other thing is I want to look at other cards you can use. So, listen, I'm, I'm not sitting here saying this is gospel that you have to use certain players or you have to go and buy or lock in cam or anything like that. There's a lot of alternatives to these players. Iguodala would work. Jalen Brown would definitely work. Mo Lucas might work. I mean, if, if you're confident with his shot, again, it's on All-Star, so you can hit it. Uh, Mullins, okay. He's a good option. Obviously, he's got a terrific free ball. Uh, we're not going to talk about that, guy. He's only in my squad for XP. Um... Monta probably a little bit undersized. You don't want to use him. David Robinson, if you can hit his three again, is a really good option. Um, there's quite a few players in here that, that you can use. I know one player I used for for quite a while was uh, was Clay. Because, you know, he's got decent height. He can defend and uh, obviously has that knockdown three-point shot. Um, outside of that, you know, just anyone who can do, you know, a bit on both ends. That Sean Kemp is amazing, by the way. I'm going to talk about it in a video coming up soon. That Sean Kemp is amazing. So he's, he's a good option if you can hit his three. And, you know, he's got an 83 ball, I think. So great option. But yeah, th there's a few. Um, Spates is good as well. He's got really good three ball. That's everything, guys. Just to, just to recap, like, use the right squad. It's really, really important that you use the right players that can, can kind of perform. Um, you need to uh, use your IQ. You need to make sure you're playing each game individually and not just kind of grouping them together and using the same strategy again and again. And the third thing is just focus on the perimeter. Just focus on shooting until one, you get really comfortable with the players you're using and two, it becomes your primary method to score. If you're a threat, especially when you've got that, that big, like I said, mine is Cam Reddish, weirdly, but when you've got that big who can shoot, you're going to win 40% more games. <laughs> that's all. All right, guys, that's all for now. Please like and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching, guys.